So that last video got almost 200 views. Riveting TV. But I'm doing one more test because someone in the comments called it jank and I absolutely agree. So I'm gonna do one more test. I'm gonna do a little bit better and show that the quality of the product will be good and not all like delaminated and junky. Like I said, feel fast, feel hard. We're moving on. We're gonna make a good one here. So once I get this thing all done, I'm gonna pull it out, show you it's gonna be better. And maybe I'll get 300 views on this video. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so last night I actually went ahead and laid up the, um, what I called stringers or rings that go around it. The actual test that I'm doing here is I'm trying to figure out what kind of release I wanna use. I use raw foam and I use three different types of release. I use raw foam and Rexco release wax. I also use the ceramic uh, wax resist. Um, this stuff is super cheap. You can get it like by the five gallon bucket. So if this works, super rad. And they used a PVA. Um, after first inspection, it looks like PVA is not gonna work on raw foam, but after, if I do seal the foam, then it'll work just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and lay up the carbon fiber over the top, but I do have some news as to how I'm gonna lay up the carbon fiber. I've talked with my buddy Don Wygen again. He gave me some good insight on how to lay it up. So uh, maybe I'll overlay some pictures and show you guys First part of the lamp, or the stringers or rings, um, on top of that, which will be the surface of the bike, will be two layers of 090 structural and then one layer of 45. After that, we'll have the Divini cell foam and then we'll have a diagonal of 45 and then we'll have two layers of 090. So as I lay down the first layers, I'm actually gonna design it so that they're almost like shingles, like a 50% overlap for the first two layers. Um, this will create kind of an S curve from the side profile, but um, this will allow me to get two layers out of the first layout process. And I can get a very good bond between the two layers by overlapping them. Um, the other benefit of this is that when you orientate this across the bike, you'll never have a leading edge that could hit the air. All of the edges will be basically with the arrow. So if I ever do get some sort of delamination or anything sort of that, it's not gonna be at the front of the bike catching wind and trying to peel itself off. It'll always be, the wind will always be pushing it back. So this test, I'm gonna lay up that strategy and see if there's any issues that come up from that. Um, see if there's any bulging or any um, bridging problems. But yeah, should go pretty well. I'll throw it in fast speed and we'll go from there. Okay, so I got the layup all finished. I'm gonna not use weight on this because it's gonna be pretty difficult to apply pressure to the outside. So I wanna see if that causes any issues of delamination. Um, but other than that, I will be doing this in two stages on the actual bike. I'll be doing the bottom layer with peel ply and then I'll be doing the next foam and three layers with peel ply again at a later date. And then if that surface finish is not ideal from the kind of like ship lap or shingling that we're doing, I may be doing one more layer after doing some block sanding and filling. But let this dry, check it out. I'll tell you another thing I'm learning from this is the logistics of doing composites. It's a whole different world. It's like a dirty, clean world where you, you have two different stages and you have to clean everything afterwards. So there's a lot of disposables that are used, like stir sticks, gloves, stuff like that. But kind of segregating those pieces from the clean section is super important. And I'm trying to figure out the best way to lay out this garage so I can get 
a cut area, a layup area, a clean area, and all those things before I start moving everything around. But yeah, that's food for thought. And I think all these tests are really getting me accompanied to the process of laying up and doing everything else. all gone guys it's all cured now I'm gonna test the styrofoam resist and see um, if the PVA or the wax or the wax resist from the ceramic stuff worked at all I'm gonna try and just carve it off see which one comes off the best from the surface You can see I put the same amount of work into each of these. Um, this is the commercial commercial wax right here. This is the ceramics wax resist. And this is the PVA, the brush on PVA. This didn't work at all. This one sucked. This one was not fun. This one just peeled right off. This one was by far the easiest. This is the underside of the bonding surface between the flanges and the carbon. Looks like we got really good bonding there. Um, so I think the next step is let's see if we can make the cheaper stuff work if we go ahead and use something like this on the foam, like some sort of sealant or even, you know, I know this says mustard, but it's actually glue. <laughs> it's, it's wood glue, I promise. Now, I don't know, it might cost more to use this and then use PVA, but I do want to work on getting a good surface finish because you can see here, I mean, it's okay, but um, it does take on a lot of the foam. So if I could eliminate these kind of like, you know, problems by putting some work into it in the front edge. If I have to fare out the buck at all, then I'm going to need to use some sort of filler. So let's see if we can find some sort of a filler that we can use that may help us get a better surface to put on something like PVA or even make the waxes just work a little bit better. This stuff is expensive. I want to buy enough to do the whole bike, but I mean, it may be cheaper just to do this over the foam and just patchwork some spots and then run this where we don't. The stacked shingle style layup actually turned out really nice. The surface finish is great. You still have a little bit of witness marks from that, but really not much, not much at all. The peel ply did its job, pushed everything down. So we are very, very, very pleased with this one. So as you can see, um, there's a much better layup than last time. Um, it's got all the layup uh, layers where I'm doing kind of the overlap shingle setup. The bonding to the rings or stringers that I have is much better. The flanges are complete and there's no air gap. The Divinity Foam did a great job of smoothing everything out. So I think with this piece in mind, we're good to go. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to start making a stand and start moving forward. Might take a little bit for this next video to come out, but hopefully there'll be a lot of progress there. Got to order some more parts and everything else. So thanks so much for following along. That was a quick one. I'll leave you guys with an awesome clip of Kyle crashing real hard. <laughs>